Hey, this is Craig Cottle from Nature Reliance School, guest instructor with DansDepot.com. We're going to look at another piece of the kit. Today we're going to look at the sleeping bag. Once you get it out of the box and you remove the wrap, and this kind of stuff I think of in far survival, uh, this right here um, can be a water carrier. This could be a method of purifying water by wrapping this around a bag and catching it. This is great st fire starting material. This is stuff that we typically just throw away in our modern day lives, but uh, in a survival situation, you got your sleeping bag box on the shelf, then you got a lot of material to use there for survival as well. But once you get it out of the box, you have a cinch sack that this bag is in. That's what all these straps do so that it makes it easy to pack. So once you get everything stuffed down in the sack itself, you can easily get these pulled apart and get your bag out. Once you get your bag out, you'll see <clears throat> it's a mummy bag. Mummy means it uh, has got a larger shape around the top. And the foot box is a bit smaller. Uh, a couple of cool features about this bag is it has this polar fleece hood that once you get set up, you can ha your head will be in polar fleece. What this does is that if you sweat during the night, you don't want water sitting on your body. So polar fleece will uh, continue to insulate you even if it is moist or damp so that's a fantastic feature it also has these draw strings at the top so that you can draw it around you keep all the air that's on you off one of the cool things if you've ever done a lot of camping uh, that you know that's important is a good zipper on this particular bag it's got a really hardy zipper on it uh, so uh, I personally have destroyed a bunch of sleeping bags simply by tearing the zipper up it's always frustrating to have a really good bag and then the zipper not work. So this zipper is fantastic. So this bag, I'm a pretty hefty dude. I weigh somewhere around, I don't know, 200 <clears throat> pounds. And so uh, this bag fits me. I can get inside this thing. Actually, I do weigh about 215 today. So uh, uh, this bag fits me just fine. Uh, one of the keys that'll help you when you're trying to get in a sleeping bag, because a lot of people get frustrated with this sort of thing if you're new to it, is uh, if the zipper is here, I will simply grab the zipper like that at the base where it's meeting the two pieces that are coming together and zip in this fashion. Mainly because if I just grab the end of the zipper and pull, it's going to end up getting hung up. Everybody gets frustrated. So grab both sides of the zipper with my thumb down in there. And I basically just got it up. Pretty simple. So that there's nothing in the way. Not what it is that's going to get me inside my sleeping bag. So in cold weather, I'll zip this thing all the way up, put the hood over myself, cinch it down. You want to make sure that you have the ability to breathe. I think that's an obvious thing. However, uh, even if you're in a severely cold weather, you might want to put something across your mouth like polar fleece or something where you can breathe through it. Um, that way you're not breathing in really seriously cold air. Uh, my son and I have done some camps where we stayed out in like zero degree weather and used bags such as this one. I didn't have this bag at the time. Um, and used bags such as this one and did just fine, uh, making sure that you can utilize your breath to warm up the tent or whatever area it is you're in. So you can drape something over your head to even add warmth to utilizing this bag too. This is a great bag though. I love it. Uh, I've got two of them myself now. For me and my wife, I already had two other bags in my possession before. I started doing this work with Dan's Depot. This is a great bag, so we like them. Hope you like them too. So as far as storing the bag, to make sure it stays with your go kit, you wanna pack it appropriately. So one of the things that gets people confused is they think that it has to get rolled up and put back into their scent sack. And quite frankly, uh, it's not going to happen. So, and uh, you don't need to. There's no need to make sure it gets rolled up. There's no requirement that things get rolled up to get them put in the bag. So one of the easiest ways is to just grab 
the hold of the cinch sack and start stuffing it in there. It's not going to be nice and neat, but people that do this stuff on a regular basis never have this stuff nice and neat. The only people that don't do it regularly think you have to roll it back up and put it back in. So just stuff this back in the bag and fill every nook and cranny with the bag. And it will go back in there. Once it's in there, that's what your cinch cord is for. And then to make it even tighter, you put your cinch straps around and you get it real tight. And you're ready to go again. So that's the sleeping bag for Dan's Depot. It's a Eureka Zero Degree Wild Basin. Um, you can read all the particulars about it on the box um, and on our website, so check that out. I'm not going to bore you to death with those things. That's good stuff, so you know. But a zero degree bag is good. Uh, sometimes if you want to store them in outside the bag, the loft will stay quite a bit longer. But as far as the survival kit mentality, you need to have everything ready to go. It'll still be good to go, even if it's stored like this. So until next time, I hope to see you on or off the trail. Mm -hmm.